There will not be a Yo Mama joke by the end of this video, I'm sorry, but yeah, if you're looking for that, sorry, I we've already used it before, can't do it twice. Anyway, this is our sun. This is the size of the most massive star ever discovered, and this is the size of the largest star ever discovered, but we are not interested in size here, we are interested in mass. Because while the largest star is around 150,000 times larger than the most massive star ever discovered, the most massive star ever discovered is clearly, well, more massive. The problem is, if we have to take into account mass and volume, then we are talking here about, what, what is it? Density, mass divided by volume. And the title of this video then would not make sense because we would have to ask what is the densest thing. There is a reason for why it is called the most massive thing and you will find out why this is the case later on. Also, by the way, I have an Arabic channel, so if you speak Arabic, I would highly appreciate if you go over there and watch the bit. Thank you very much. Next transition. Now, before we move on, it is important to define what kind of mass we are interested in here. We are interested in the inertial mass of an object. What gives an object its inertia, its resistance to being moved when a force is applied. Basically, it is harder to push something like that because it has more inertial mass than something like this. Inertial mass is the M in Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, which describes the amount of energy that is bound within a physical system that makes it have a certain amount of mass. My 80 kilograms of mass, for example, has this much bound energy within my physical system, which makes me have a mass of 80 kilograms. Inertial mass is proportional to gravitational mass, how much gravity is expected to be exerted by an object depending on the value of its mass. We are not interested here in relativistic mass, which changes Einstein's equation quite a bit and depends on the velocity of such an object. To give you an example for why relativistic mass is a problem, let's imagine that I have a twin who has the same exact mass as me, 80 kilograms. Let's say that he is somewhere in the universe and he is moving relative to me at 90% the speed of light. His apparent mass would seem to have increased from my point of view, but it's the other way around from his point of view. It's my mass that seems to have apparently increased. However, from our own point of view, our mass is always 80 kilograms, no matter how fast we are moving. The use of relativistic mass in today's physics is actually discouraged. Even Einstein himself wasn't too fond of the idea of relativistic mass. Why? Because everything in the universe is in a constant state of motion. And if you wanted to define the mass of an object to be its relativistic mass, then you need to define what is moving relative to what else is moving. And you would not have a fixed value for mass. It is better to stick to the inertial mass of an object. In the previous example, that would be my 80 kilograms that does not change no matter where I am in the universe and no matter how fast I am moving relative to whatever else is moving. We are also going to exclude unconventional forms of mass, such as dark matter. Yes, there seems to be something that is adding mass to galaxies, but no one is really sure what dark matter is made of just yet. One of the densest objects in the universe is the neutron star. Imagine something that has three times the mass of our sun compacted into a sphere that's around 22 kilometers across. It is made mostly of neutrons. You know, an atom is made of protons, neutrons, electrons. A neutron star is made mostly of neutrons. Now, it is being held together because of the inherent nature of neutrons. It is being prevented from collapsing due to its own gravity because of quantum degeneracy pressure and the strong nuclear force, but it might not be the densest thing in the universe. There is very strong evidence for the existence of neutron stars, so at this point in time, they are the densest confirmed star in the universe. However, it is possible to have stars that are even more dense than a neutron star, one of which is the hypothesized quark star. As I've said, a neutron star is made up mostly of one of the constituents of an atom, neutrons. But what are neutrons made of? That would be quarks. So it would make sense that a star that is even more dense than a neutron star would be made of the constituents of neutrons, quarks. A quark star could have a mass up to five times the mass of our sun. The upper limit of a neutron star is three times the mass of our own sun, and it is confined in a volume that is slightly smaller than 
a neutron star. But that is the densest star in the universe. It is not the densest thing in the universe. That would probably go to a black hole. But you could fall into a trap by calling a black hole the densest thing in the universe. This is why the title of the video is what is the most massive thing. There are two ways to define the density of a black hole. Dividing the mass of the black hole over the volume of its singularity or dividing the mass of the black hole over the volume of a sphere. The radius of the sphere is the distance between the event horizon of the black hole, the point where nothing can escape, not even light, and the center of this black hole. In the first case, you would end up with an undefined quantity because you are essentially dividing by zero. The singularity occupies no volume. But in the second case, you end up with an actual density for the black hole. The thing is, you don't really want to define the density of a black hole by taking its mass and dividing it over the volume of a singularity. The issue is black holes are constructed in such a way that the dimensions of space and time themselves are funneled into what appears to be this dimensionless point. So you don't really want to divide by that. And this would make every black hole be the same kind of black hole everywhere in the universe. But that is clearly not the case. Black holes are not born equal. Some are more massive than others. It is better to divide the mass of a black hole by taking the radius to be the distance between the event horizon of the black hole until the center of such a black hole. You see, the more mass a black hole has, the less dense it is. For example, a black hole that has the mass of Earth is orders of magnitude more dense than that of a neutron star. But that kind of black hole doesn't really exist naturally. For naturally occurring black holes, say one that has five times the mass of our own sun, the density of such black holes is just slightly higher than that of a neutron star. If we go way higher, let's say a billion times more mass than our own sun. Such a black hole would have a density that is 50 times less than that of water. Not even a neutron star, just water, plain old water. The most massive black hole ever discovered was found in a galaxy called that. This black hole has around 40 billion times more mass than our own sun. This black hole has around 10,000 times more mass than the supermassive black hole that is in the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. If we took this black hole and replaced our sun with it, which is a really bad idea, its event horizon would extend beyond the orbit of Pluto. Orbit of Pluto? Pluto is not a planet anymore beyond the orbit of Neptune and then 25 times more than that. The most massive black holes that will ever exist do not exist just yet. They will exist in the future. To give you an example for how these absolutely enormous black holes can form, let's take a look at our local group of galaxies. This is a group of galaxies that includes our galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, and around 50 other smaller galaxies. Eventually, the galaxies in our local group are going to merge into this giant prime galaxy. Much of the matter in this galaxy over time will be lost because of some gravitational decay that happens in this galaxy. 98 to 99 percent of the matter will be ejected into outer space and around 1 to 10 percent of the matter will exist as part of a black hole that once held this galaxy together. The most massive black hole that will ever exist in our local group is around a billion to 10 billion times more massive than our own sun. And this, by the way, is less massive than the most massive black hole that was discovered today. But you have to remember, the most massive black hole that was ever discovered is likely to have other galaxies which are gravitationally bound to it. So it's only going to get more massive over time. The point in time where these absolutely enormous massive black holes are going to exist is a trillion quintillion years in the future. This is when the most massive things will exist. For real though, it's, uh, it's probably your mama. Yeah, sorry about that.